Hey, hi, ho, and howdy, everybody. My name is Chanel Shook, and today I'm thinking about talking about something just a little bit extra. interesting frog also you know the the best part about opening up a video like this is no one will have any idea why I said that they will not have the contest contest they definitely won't have a contest but they definitely won't have context either and because I am the devil I enjoy it anyway hey hi ho and howdy everybody my name is Chanel Shook and welcome to yet again another episode of the Ruby review cap extra this time for uh, 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 volume five, chapter nine. Uh, I think it's the perfect storm. Is that what it is? I could look it up, but I'm dumb. But I'm not gonna. But it's it's perfect. Those two words are in there, so we're gonna stick. I almost just choked my spit and died. That was not healthy. Um. Anyway, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. The episode's all right. Um, you know, I, I, I did enjoy this episode. I do have a certain level of complaint to it, and I understand why other people did when it came out as well. It's not nearly as bad. I've, I've noticed specifically it's it's not quite as bad um, if, if you go through and just binge all the um, episodes at once. But because Ruby is a show where you have to wait a week in between episodes, I definitely do understand um, how how this kind of episode specifically could be a teensy bit of a frustration because it, for for those who remember previously on Ruby um, uh, the last episode ends off God damn it me I'm dying uh, <laughs> last episode ends off on a little bit of cliffhanger regarding uh, the Belladonnas and uh, this episode is kind of mean to anyone who wanted to know immediately what happens after that point. <laughs> Um, but we will get into that in a moment. This episode, episode mm -hmm, nailed it. Um, this episode is broken up into uh, two parts. Um, it's it's almost entirely based on one thing. This episode, but there, admittedly, it does jump to back to menagerie. Um, though the the episode, the the primary bulk of the episode is all about um, the Branwen tribe and Raven and um, Vernal meeting with Cinder, Watts, Mercury, and Emerald. And so I think we should talk about the big part first. Um, so yeah, no, basically, uh, we pick off pretty much right where we left off in regards to their specific storyline. Um, uh, Emerald had just, has apparently just gotten done beating up Toothless McGillicuddy's um, fucking ass. Um, very interested to see if he lived probably not um anyway so they all roll up into raven's camp and uh Vernal goes and grabs her she's like hey some shit is going on outside you should go there you have careless it is christmas and apparently that makes me like a very strange version of german um anyway so yeah raven goes off there uh to go deal with uh e the evil of e evil and basically, the whole episode, again, it's one of those things where it, it, it does frustrate me a little bit because it is a huge break in between um, the, the cliffhanger that we got last time. And this episode doesn't do a great job with not immediately doing the same exact thing with the same exact, you know, fucking location on the planet. <laughs> But I do actually, I really liked the, 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 the scene itself. I liked the interaction between Raven and Cinder and Watts and the other two to a lesser extent because they just kind of sit there and mean mugger the whole time. And Raven as the person, she is just sasses the fuck out of him. Um, basically, the whole conversation can be whittled down to... Um, Raven wants nothing to do with anyone on the planet. Cinder and Co are like, "Fuck nah, you 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 look at me right now, 
See this thing I can do with this fire? It's gonna be your ass in a couple seconds if you don't just fucking, you know, come on. Make this easier on us. Make it easier on you. Make it easier on everybody. You're gonna help us. We're gonna just go. You can get your maiden. Uh, we're gonna go to the vault. We're gonna open up. And it's gonna, we're gonna get the, we're gonna get the, the relic. And you can be fine. And you'll definitely believe me because I'm definitely not a villain. And that's never gone wrong for anyone before. Um, to which Raven doesn't approve of a lot. Um, and it's a lot of back and forth between the two. A lot of really sassy back and forth. And that's one thing I definitely have to get, uh, give props for is, um, the dialogue in the episodes really entertaining, especially between Raven and Cinder, because they're just they just sass the ever living fuck out of each other, and Watts does a fair good bit of sassing as well. And I uh, it's it's nice to have him actually doing some stuff because he, again it doesn't always show up that often. That's the problem. It's villains. There's there's a decent amount of them, so they're spread thin every once in a while. They just gotta jump here and there, and you you want more of them, and you're like, but also you're a bad guy, so I don't know if I want more. It's it's a struggle. Um. But, you know, basically, uh, they do that for a while. Um, I, I do say you should get your maiden. They actually come there looking for the maiden, uh, in which Raven and Vernal then go ahead and perform for them. Sh show, show them the goods. Flash them the, the, the dark uh, undersides of... Yep. That's what we're calling it right now. That's... Some people call them maiden powers. I call them the genitals. Um, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, point is basically put off a show and Cinder prepared. It proceeds to just go completely like, mmm, I want me some of that. Um, and basically the, the, the scene kind of concludes with um, Raven and Cinder and, and the gang, I suppose, all kind of agreeing to a temporary truce so long as a certain number of conditions are met. Basically, with if, if Cinder and Watson, the gang, and the White Fang are all willing to team up to sneak attack, ambush, and kill Crow... Which Raven wants Crow gone because obviously he's he could be he could be a nuisance, especially the Lord knows he's a nuisance for them. But he's gonna even be a bigger nuisance if they end up with the relic. I see you and your logic, Bird Mama. Um, but basically, yeah, she's like, you help me kill Crow, and then you let us go, and by all means, you can have the relic. It's great. We'll go grab that for you, and it's good. And everyone's like, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, that's not true. <laughs> Cinder's like, yeah, that's awesome, because that means Ruby's gonna be there, and that means I can deep fry me some teenage lady girl. Um, redundant, I know, but it technically not completely inaccurate. Um, anyway. Uh, and in the end, they end up shaking on it and agreeing to, yeah, you help me kill Crow and the, the kids. Um, in exchange for that... In exchange for that, and leaving them alone, Raven and Vernal will go with them to help them acquire the relic of knowledge. Let's see, pronounce that word. Um, so you know, again, it's 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 it's, a, it's not almost the whole episode, but it can be shortened down pretty quickly, um, or summed up pretty quickly. A lot, a lot of it is back sass between the two of them, and I, or three of them, and I, I really did enjoy that. Um, it's a break that I wish could have been put somewhere else, personally, but for what it was, I really did enjoy it. Um, and I have to, uh, this is actually something I want to talk about, too, is I, I do like how they, uh, throughout this volume have actually g given me a bit of an increased love for some of the characters who I didn't necessarily always care for before. Like, Cinder specifically, I will say, is an example. Like, I always liked Cinder as I like that kind of smug, smarmy, piece of shit villain, it's like, yeah, I know that I'm the baddest bitch around, so what are you gonna do about it? Um, and I know not everyone was 100% behind, and that's one of the things, is one of the things you hear complaints a lot is um, Ruby's villains, which makes me really sad, because I, then I just think that people 
think that Roosji doesn't know how to make villains, and then I'm like, have you fucking seen anything else they've ever made? Fucking Camp Camp, Red vs. Blue, Day fucking Five. Motherfuckers know how to make the greatest fucking villains. Um, point is, I, I definitely do understand why some people have problems with them, though. Um, that being said, I, I will say that this season in particular... Give, give me a bit of an increased love for Cinder specifically. And the more and more she gets shown off, the more and more I find myself enjoying her presence. I, I like her smarmy dickishness, but I liked last season when we got to see, you know, the, the more scared and uh, reclused... Re that's not a... It's not a thing. Um, the more subdued. There we go. Nailed it. Mm -hmm. Like a fucking hammer. Um, side of Cinder. And, you know... Uh, I just, I enjoyed it. I will, I'll say that much. I'm sure there'll be more to talk. I know for a fact there'll be more to talk about in coming episodes. Um, but again, for the sake of spoilers, we'll leave it here. Um, anyway. After that kind of gets wrapped up, um, we do jump a little to, we jump over to Menagerie for a small amount of time. Um, but first, I guess we'll talk about the, the last section in regards to Raven and the game. Which, again, there's not much to say other than it's it's Raven and Vernal in their tent, and it's basically Raven saying out loud, Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm literally just doing this to try and buy us a little bit of time. I know that the second we help them get the relic, they're going to fucking kill us. There's no point to keeping us alive. The, the, vil, villains. Vi, vil, they need a big flashing light bulb over the head that says, I am a villain. I will backstab you. It's what I do. Because I'm a fucking villain. Um... <laughs> um. And yeah, basically, it just comes down to Raven going like, "Yeah, no, we, you can't trust him at all. This, this is, this is going to go poorly. I know that they're not gonna do this. We just need to figure out a way to preempt their tomfuckery." And then it um, leads to Raven teleporting off, using her link to Crow, and then um, instead of going to Crow, end up going perhaps somewhere else. Where? Where do we go now? Where do we go? Um, we go to Menagerie is what we go to next. Um, yeah, and the other part is, again, it's a relatively small section. And it's, for the most part, just Gira um, having a little small confrontation between Corsic and Fennec until Sun and Blake show up to kind of rescue his ass a little bit. Um, Sun rolls in through the window being all like, Bitch, I got a staff! And um, then Blake... Sneak attacks him from the, the, the balcony skies. How the fuck did she get up there? Fuck if I know. She says cat. They find a way. Um, but yeah, and, it, and she end up rolls, rolls up in there. Flip falls. Down there, lands on her feet. Again, because she's a cat. Um, <clears throat> and uh, makes use of her, her shadow clones to uh, create a little ice clone to lock him in place. And it, it, <laughs> okay, um, so people who know this uh, small series of videos that I do, I defend Ruby to an absurdly strong extent. Even even points where it might not always need it or deserve it, I still do because I love the show. It's still my favorite show of all time, and I don't expect that to change within the next decade and a half. Um. But we shall see. Um, that being said, every once in a while, there's one or two things that when it happens, I'm just like, I, I can't really defend that one. <laughs> and, like, for example, Volume 2. Volume 2 is great. There's so much to love about Volume 2. But every once in a while, it, it did have a couple slip-ups. Um, I think Breach could have been handled a little bit better. In, in, in the overall... I, I thought it was handled fine because of what it means for the story overall. I just, I, I wish they'd gone around it a little bit more to make, I don't know, just even things out a little bit more so it didn't seem like quite the fucking curb stomping that it ended up turning out to be. Because, because, because we, because, yeah. Again, it makes sense for the overall story, it's just for that moment in particular, it doesn't show off very well. Um, but that's not the thing from season two. Season two is exactly what you think it is from season two it's the single worst moment in all of Ruby and it's the, the rooftop um 
Like, because like every once in a while there'll be that one. It's it like it's to the point where I don't even want to go back and watch reactions to Dance Dance Infiltration, which is a shame because half of that episode is fucking phenomenal. No, three, th fucking um, five, six of that episode is amazing. It's just there's two small parts of that episode that just are have issues. Uh, and number one is the 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 running on the rooftop scene, and I just someone should have tried a little you got just take an extra 10 minutes like I probably wouldn't have fixed it but you could at least done something with it it just could have fixed it for the DVDs could have oh god um <laughs> and I definitely don't say that to shit on Kruby or anything because I, I love him dearly it's just that uh, that moment specifically is questionable um that and of course, uh, later on in the scene, uh, when Cinder's mask decides, like, I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere, I'm nowhere, and I'm back again. Um, again, just it's a legitimate flaw, and there's a problem with it, and I and I understand people's complaints with it because I have a complaint with it as well. Um, me, me even being as incredibly overly positive as I am, that's it's very hard for me to say that that one's okay and while while it's to to a lesser extent for me this episode has one of those moments and it's when blake freezes corsic and fennec and then everyone in the room just sits there and like neat let's chat let's let's talk about how we're gonna kick their ass instead of just i don't know going up and punching them in the head like it's it you it, all I'm gonna say is this whole sec next episode that you're about to have didn't need to happen because you could have just punched these two idiots in the fucking head. That like it's there was nothing stopping you. <laughs> Literally nothing stopped you. Even if Blake had ran off to go protect Callie sooner, or e even if even if you still did the thing where Blake ran off to protect Callie, you know what? You didn't have to go like, hey. No, go now. You you do that. We'll we will handle this. Fi Instead of just be like, go now. Wham wham. <laughs> I'm gonna need a. Okay, I'm gonna need to cut those down. Wham wham because that was probably really fucking loud in someone's ears. <laughs> Point is, you could have you could just hit him. You could just made it so much easier. I I know again for the sake of the story you wanted more. You either should have just hit him, or chosen a different method to have set up the scene that you did. It's just, again, it's, it's hard for me to defend that one. It was, it was a very not good choice. <laughs> that being said, it's an okay episode. <laughs> um, yes or no? They basically sit there and have a discussion for a while. Have, have tea. Tea and crumpets. Um, and, uh, Gira and Sun basically, again, they're like, yeah, no, we can handle these schmucks. You go get your mom, go make sure she's okay. Uh, there's a little bickering back and forth. Again, you just, sh moving on. Um, and then Blake takes off and, uh, heads off to go protect her mom's, her mom, her, her mommy. Um, and in the end, she is, uh, stopped. She is, she is thwarted in her attempts by an attractive, but who would never find me attractive, anime chameleon girl. Um, so, you yeah, know, her and Ilya have a little bit of a showdown, and then basically the episode ends on yet again another cliffhanger in the next room over. <laughs> and those two get ready to throw the proverbial uh, gloves off onto the ground. Dramatic like, being like, bitch, you want fight? I want fight. You know what? That's how real I am. I don't even say like the full extent of the words that I'm trying to tell you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and then that's the end of the episode. Um, again, overall, I, I like the episode. There's, there's especially Raven and Cinder's uh, discussion. I, I really like uh, what the, what they set up in that scene and just th the communication between the characters because again I've mentioned before I am a huge dialogue fan 
Um, I, I, I geek out over people just sitting there talking to each other. It, that appeals to me a lot. And I know it doesn't appeal to everybody, but I can dig it. Um, point is, um, that was a good, again, that one specific moment of Menagerie in particular is, mm, is hard to defend. Um, but other than that, again, it's, it's a fine episode and it sets up, in my personal opinion, one of my favorite episodes of the season. Um, which is uh, the next episode, True Colors. This was the part where I was going to sing the song, and then I forgot. I don't know the lyrics to the song. I don't know who sang the song. I want to say Cindy Lauper. Gonna look that up right after this and be incredibly disappointed with how stupid I am. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for watching, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy, and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the episode. I would love to get opinions on it, as always. I'll like it if you liked it. Uh, set it on fire if you hated it. Um, that's, that's, I mean, that's you. That's you. You do you, Simon and Garfunkel. Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Thyme. You do you. Um... Uh, I will see you guys in the next episode where we will talk again about true color. Again, I don't know the fucking. I'll just sing in living color. In living color. Okay. Tools, tools, lemons. Bye bye, everybody. Holy shit.